it was a monday and rad and govinda had just finished their morning prayers and walk and were chilling out in their home in balsana when they entered into a discussion on a topic building upon the past few days of identifying the real vrindavan and ayodhya this day it was the turn of kashi and kailash govinda was telling rad about how in reality there were three itihasas the ramayana and mahabharata being two and he not so much talked about the work of Shivarahasya Purana being the third. This prompted Rad to ask the question of, about Shiva, the real philosophy behind this deity and the locations associated with it. The following is the explanation given by Govinda in his own words. Hey Radhu Sweetheart, Shiva is the most ultimate of our incarnations, but most obscured in conventional literature, confusing the terminologies associated with him. Note here that when I say Shiva, I refer to Kameshwara, none other than yourself, with me being Kameshwari. You must also note that the original form of this Kameshwara and Kameshwari is none other than Ganesha and Tara. Why did we take this incarnation of Shiva? The incarnation of Krishna was to show real love, the real Rasalila to the world and how to remain in the bliss of love, in the bindu of the causal yantra, attaining both mind gasm and body gasm. This happened in Vairu, Swami Malai and associated places around it. The incarnation of Rama was to show the concept of surrender, how to activate both Sakara and Nirakara forms and to merge finally in love and from there recreate the entire world. This was mainly centered around Meru, Uti, but was spread all around in other places too. The incarnation of Shiva was to show the various components of pure love and the four kinds of power couples as well as the trinity of forms. Thus, this is basically an enumeration of various forms spread all over the place but with the central and continuous residence being Aru, Tiruvaru. Historically, Aru with its five majestic gopurams has been the site of the fire dynasty called for this reason as Panchala and producing illustrious souls like Draupadi, which we have earlier covered in the Mahabharata context. The Shiva avatara can be understood in terms of eight forms known as Ashtamurti, which cover the Panchamnaya and Trimurti and have eight places associated with them. Corresponding to each, there are also eight Virattana Sthalas, where I describe the detrimental factors to love that must be held at bay. In nature, the eight forms can be seen as the five elements of nature, namely earth, water, fire, air, space, and the three illuminators, namely star, sun, moon. These also denote the five amnayas or entrances to Kameshwara and Kameshwari. Let's see these Ashtamurti concepts in chronological order with the connected temples for each. We start first with your own residence, Shiva's residence. This is described as Kailash, beside Manasarovar, which is a lake created by Brahma. Also known as Pushkar, this is nothing but the majestic temple tank of Kamarala in Tirvaru, shown here. You eternally dwell in this place as Kameshwara, with me as Kameshwari, the combined form known as Tyagaraja. This represents the Atma, essentially a female, but now taking a male child form, covering itself in ignorance while Divine Will takes on a female form as a nurturing mother. To show this, Tyagaraja shows you, the male, Shiva, with fee, me, the female, Uma or Kondi, as a couple, in the Sakara aspect of love. But also hidden in this form is the Nirakara aspect, where you are the motherly female Radha, as shown by the single plate of hair on the reverse side of the Vigraha, while me, as a male child, Murga or Krishna, is shown in the front side of the Vigraha. Thus, Tyagraja is the single complete form of both Sakara and Nirakara love that ever exists in the universe. This is called the Hamsa or Ajaparahasya. Aru, just like Meru and Vairu, has no origin story, no beginning. These directly are manifestations of the causal concept when the universe was created as a dream. Even going by the modern scientific theory of quantum fluctuations, we know that a neutral zone or vacuum automatically creates a pair of positive and negative particles. 
that neutral zone is Vairur, the Bindu, while Arur and Merur are the pair of particles created by it. When one is upward, the other is naturally downwards to bring balance to the system. The incarnation started in Tiruvarur when you took a child form of Ganeshwara, while I was in the form of your mother Tara. In the temple, we see this as Mokshara Ganapati, you being the Ganesha, while I being the womb shape outlining inside which you reside. Then, we split into two forms as Uchishta Ganapati and Tara, which is also seen in the temple. From here, we started manifesting in the Ashtamulti forms. These forms have their own equivalence in Tirumaru, which were created whenever we returned after each of these manifestations. From here, let us discuss the Ashtamulti. Ashtamulti, Murti number one, Bhava. Bhava means creation or existence. The basis of creation is water. For all life, sustaining oxygen on earth came from water. The river that sustains Merur, Vairur and Arur is known as Bhavani. This manifestation of Bhava happened in Tirvane Kaval of Tichi, indicating the northern Amnaya of Aghoratva and Enenla. Let's see how. First, to bring about, we went about bringing life to this planet, to do which we had to stabilize the Earth's orbit create the moon to balance gravity forces and use the forces of Venus and Jupiter called Asura and Devaguru to bring water to the earth and thus enable life. But there was a catch here, in that the atmosphere of the earth was filled with all kinds of toxic gases and this was known as the demon Jalandhara and his wife Soma also known as Tulasi. To understand this, we need to understand some basics in Ayurveda. There are two factors important for sustaining life, hotness known as Agni and wetness known as Soma. Hot and wet creates Pitta or fiery nature. Cold and wet gives Kapha or slimy. Cold and dry gives Vata or airy. These three are necessary respectively for metabolism, structure and movement respectively. However, if an infection enters the body, it too is a life form, deriving its sustenance through water. To eliminate it, we need to heat the body, destroying the evil thriving in wetness, which is essentially Jalandhara, rescuing the water content Soma from him and merging it into Agni. Thus, Shiva destroyed Jalandhara using a weapon known as Sudarshana Chakra representing fire that he created drawing a circle by his leg. Taking the form of sun or Surya Narayana, he then united with Soma which was in the form or aspect of the moon. The resulting being it became the plant we all know today as Tulasi. This episode happened in Tiruvirkudi. We then celebrated the arrival of water to earth and the marriage of sun and moon by creating the city of Kumbakonam around a massive sacred water tank called Mahamaha. You took the form of Brahma to prepare the seeds of creation in a pot, Vishnu to fill it with aspects of truth and ideas, Rudza to seal the pot. All this happened in Tirchere, where you are celebrated by the names Sara Parameshwara and Saranatha, representing the essence of all wisdom. Then, in Kumbakonam, after flooding the entire world with water and ice, you broke the pot, which happened in 12 events and kick-started the process of creation. Here, you took 12 forms for the 12 processes to denote the 12 months of time, and each is celebrated today as a Jyotirlinga, while also being associated with a zodiac sign. Even today, every year, the Mahamaham festival is celebrated with all 12 forms. The twelve temples with the Jyotirlinga names and associated events is as follows in order shown. 1. Banapurishwara. The arrow is released to break the pot which is connected with Mesharasi and Rameshwara. Sakotai Amruta Kalashanata. The mid portion of the pot fell in Meenarasi and Trimbakeshwar. Banapurishwara though was Mesharasi. 3. Uh, Someshwara. 
where a string tying the pot fell. This is Rishabha Rasi and Somnath. Nageshra, the Vilva leaves tied to the pot fell here. It is Mithuna Rasi and Nageshra Jyotirlinga. Abhimukeshwara, the coconut of the pot fell. This is Karkadaka Rasi and Omkareshwara. Gautameshwara, the sacred thread of the pot fell. This is Tuladashi and Gushneshwara Jyotirlinga. Adi Kambatta Vishwanatha, where the flowers of the pot fell. This is Simharasi and Vaidyanatha Jyotirlinga. Kalahastishwara, where the sandal decorating the pot fell. This is Vrishikarasi and Mahakaleshya Jyotirlinga. Kottayu Kotishwara, where few drops of the nectar fell. This is Makararashi and Bhima Shankar Jyotirlinga. Ekambareshwara, balance items of the pot fell. This is Kanya Rashi and Malikarjuna. Kashi Vishwanatha, uh, the Levant, which is Kashi Vishwanatha, where water from the pot fell, uh, creating the Mahamaham tank, and it is venerated in the form of nine rivers. This is Dhanu Rashi and Visveshwara. Finally, Adikumbeshwara where the pot itself stayed here and is the main deity in the sanctum. This is Kumbharashi and Kedarnath. This joint Jalandara, however, increased the problem as these toxic gases spread everywhere. To console this, you, Shiva, took in all this poison into yourself and I, Tara, had to take a suitable form to rescue you. I underwent penance in the name Akhilandeshwari, wearing for my earrings the Shri Chakra which indicates the unity of male and female elements and thus marital longevity. Holding the poison in your throat, you were known as Nilakantha. All this happened in Tiruvanai Kaval near Trichy, where even today you exist in the form of water. Having settled this, we played around in Trichy for a while, showing the world the ideal power couple and the couple of love, which is the NN love. You took your female Radha form and were known as Matsubhuteshwara aiding the childbirth of me in the form of an infant. This temple is also there in the rock fort of Trichy. Through this, we showed how to see God or divine will inside everything and everybody, while also respecting the roles given to each, which is the essence of Aghoratva Bhava. Anyway, having brought water to the planet, it was impure and salty in the oceans. To make it usable, it had to evaporate into the sky, which is essentially considered your own hair as Vyomakesha, and then you had to release it as a river, fresh and usable. This we did in Merur, taking the form of Bhavani Shara and Bhavani, thus bringing the source of the Bhavani river. In the form of Vyomakesha, we are Panchanadi Shara and Dharma Samvardhani of Tirvayar, where the hair is considered to be the space surrounding the lingam in the temple itself, where you split the river into five, thus reducing their depth and making it easier to evaporate and percolate through the earth as well, nourishing people with grains and agriculture, much as Bhavani Sharar in Uti with fresh dew in the air, nourishes people with fruits and vegetables. For this reason, we call water as Amritam, and the form of Dharma Samvardhini is called Mohini or Narayani, Nara meaning water. By the principle of dream creation, we then standardize this process to not just Bhavani, but every river on earth. Having finished this mission, we returned back to Tirvaru. In Tirvaru, we created the form of Anandeshwara in dedication to our blissful place, showing the sage Mankana how all of life dances in accordance with the dance of love. We now move on to the second of the Ashtamurtis, Ugra. Ugra means fierce or intense. It refers here to knowledge of love of the self, of causal reality, etc. This is related to truth and the firmness of truth, which is why this is the earth element, the western amnaya of expansion and NS love is indicated here. The place is Suchinza. To teach the world the path of jnana and wisdom of causal reality, we merge the Panchanadishwara Hara and Dharma Samvardhini Hari forms into one 
and took the form of a young male named Mayan or Shasta or Dakshinamurti. You spent your childhood in Trayambakapuram near Arul, where even today it is known as Balashasta Temple near Sengalipuram. Then you moved southwards to Mahendragiri, which is where you taught the wisdom to all the sages and rishis and lived for a long time among these pristine hills. This place you were known as the form of Dakshinamurti. But here you took the form of Sthanu Mal Ayan or Dattatraya, combining all the three forms of Brahma, Vishnu and Rudra to explain this knowledge to the world. This was done in Suchindram near Kanyakumari. I had to take the corresponding form of Sri Devi combining Kamakshi, Meenakshi and Visalakshi into one. We then took this chance to teach and showcase the NS love where you took the form of Jeshta or Anusaya called here as Mun Uritta Nangai while I took the form of Sri Devi called Narayan. The message you taught here was humility and surrender and how not to have reservations against anything as the female soul fully absorbed in me so that you are open to the highest possible. Highest possibility is the message of Shishti Krama. This is why as Anusuya, you perform the act of even disrobing yourself in front of the Trimurti, turning them into infants as you do so. With fully Nirakara absorption, I provide for you everything. Now it was time to teach about the bad effects of having reservations and contempt in the mind. For this reason, I took the form of Sati Dakshayani and in, was an intense penance to marry you. I was born as the daughter of Daksha Prajapati in Sembanar Kovil near Tarangambadi and in due course married you. We lived happily in Tirvarur until my father decided to conduct a yajna or sacrifice without inviting you. Against your wishes and warnings I attended, becoming witness to endless slandering of you by Daksha, after which I immolated myself merging into you. You took the form of ferocious Veerabhadra with me as Bhadrakali, destroying the Yajna, killing my father and later reviving him with a goat's head. This happened in Tirpadiyalu. We then finished this form of Yashtamurti, returned to Aru, established here a Prithvi Linga made of an anthill called Valmikanaka, from which later on the form of Adirama was born. Now we go on to the third Murti which is Ishana. Isha means Lord or ruling over, particularly all of space, time and action. This is the space element, the foundation framework in which other elements exist. It denotes the upward Amnaya of Akshimandala and the place of Chidambaram. As you, as Adi Bhairava, I accompanied you in the form of Mohini and we were wandering around Tirvaru, the Dalkavanam or Palm Pine Forest. Here we were witnesses to few sages misusing the causal power of language and mantras fueled by their own arrogance, te- thinking they could independently rule the entire world without the interference of divine will. To dispel their ignorance, we mesmerized them with lust towards us, distracting their focus, in retaliation of which they created a horde of animals to attack us, most importantly the elephant. I killed this elephant, Gajasura. And the place where I did this is known as Varur. Elephant is known as Madha and here represents pride. Following this, we headed to Chidambaram on the request of ardent sages where we displayed the Ananda Tandavam which explained the role of the Akshi Mandala. You were Nataraja, Shiva Kameshwara with your form, with the drum, the raised hand, fire denoting creation, preservation and destruction, the raised leg and the blessing hand denoting wailing and grace or information. I am Shiva Kameshwari instructing you on what to do when, putting to use the Kala Chakra, symbolized by the Prabha or Aura behind you and the communication behind, between us happening through the Panchapakshi, symbolized by the parrot held in my hand. Through this, we show the importance and indispensability of creation and interaction between soul and divine will to achieve complete lordship and ruling of entire universe. Those that did meet the eligibility were then sent to Tirvadur for the Ajapa Rahasya where we too returned. Here we established Hatakeshara as a pillar of fire or Jyotirlinga tunneling all the way down to the netherworlds for sages to understand the true formless nature of us. 
this tunnel going all the way to another world which was then covered up by an ant hill so that the place is now an underground pit or nagapilla in later times muruga established his shakti or veil here which symbolizes our union as the upward and downward triangle in the causal or the yantra form now we move to the fourth of the ashtamurtis which is called pashupati this name means the lord of all beings who are bound by pasha or desire it thus represents the desire aspect or triangle of the causal form which is basically vishnu or ekambareshwara kamakshi of kanchipa having returned to tirvaru we were once entertaining ourselves in a game of dice where i kameshwari was playing with you as vishnu and having won i laughed loudly leading you to angrily curse me as pashu after which i was born as a cow in earth you came to me as a cowherd as vishnu and the place today is known as tera rindu then the sage bharata praying for the daughter restored me to a human form bringing me up in a place called kuttalam or tiruttuvutti i was known as parvati or kamadenu and was aiming to attain you the gods then took the help of manmata to try and distract your dhyanam and enable the wedding to happen on account of the fact that they were impatient to conduct the wedding since only then would skanda be born and kill tarakasura a demon that was tormenting everybody at that time however he wanted to illustrate how true desire and love must arise inward at the causal level and then go outward from there to the physical level and not the other way around to illustrate this you burnt manmata to ashes and this happened in a place called kurukai later on the prayers of rati you revived manmata her husband back but to a formless form to show how the original love is never a physical same aged couple but always an owner own to form attaining fullness at the rasa level then to show the world how viraha bhava penance is performed i took the form of kamakshi in kanchipuram you being the shivalingam that i owned hugging you once to protect you from a raging flood anyway with the penance finally completed i attained you in edirkol padi where you gave assurance of marrying me the marriage rites were performed in nearby velvi kudi the marriage itself was performed in nearby tirumanancheri which is today seen near mailaru today we then headed back to kanchipuram where we represented the vishnu aspect of you operating upon ideas producing them to fruit symbolized by the name ekambareshwara denoting a mango and i supporting them by preventing loss of ideas i also restored manmata back to full life as a physical form this kamadeva that he may be born to us when i take the form of krishna so in this form i was known as kamakshi to honor the now purified true love i held in my own hands the sugar cane bow and flowery arrows which are the weapons of manmata the sugar cane symbolized the aspect of sun or surya who brings forth ideas fusion and harvest it is for this reason that year after year in the pongal festival sugar cane is harvested and offered to the sun god we then return to tirvar to us ganesha was born similar to your sakara form as a child with a human face then he took the elephant face after an altercation with you this happened in tilatarpanapuri also known as setalapati which is the prayag prayagraj or meeting place of the triple aspect bala sundari jeshta as ganga yamuna saraswati respectively after killing a horde of demons such as sindura sura and gajamuka sura ganesha is finally celebrated as vail uganda vinayakar near ramanathapuram shortly muruga was also born as my nirakara form such as krishna in the location of vaitishwaran koil by the name selva muttukumara swami in the forest of reeds from here he obtained the veil shakti from me and killed tarakasura in tirchindur so the veil obtaining from shikkal is shown here and the form in tirchindur after which he returned back to tirvaru where his veil can be seen still today in the hexagon inscribed stone of hatikeshwara which we just saw following this there was a phase where demons had tormented good and innocent people playing around with the chastity of women in particular to protect innocent people you took the form of dharma shastra and killed the demon mahishi the buffalo demon in edumeli near sabrimala whereas i took the form of chandika and uh, i killed the buffalo demon mahishasura in ramanathapuram devi pattinam 
This was the form also known popularly as Durga or Chandika or Pirari. The war of nine days was finished and this event today celebrated grandly as Dasara in Kulashekara Pattinam with me as Muttaraman and you as Jnana Purishwara. Following this, I then took the form of Muppidati or Pidari to kill the three pairs of demons, Raktabija Dhumralochana, Shumba Nishumba and Chandamunda. This happened in Surandai or Rajasurya Nallur, also named after the sun. You took the form of Navagrahas or nine planetary forms denoting numbers or mind moments from each of which I derived different kinds of energies. Varahi from the sun, Maheshwari from the moon, Kaumari from Mars, Vaishnavi from Mercury, Brahmi from Jupiter, Aindri from Venus, Chamunda from Saturn, Narasimhi from Rahu and Ganeshari from Ketu. We eventually returned to our <coughs> and to we just wanted to live as a happily married couple. The form of Kamakshi Ekambreshwara was established in Tiruvadur in the form of Katai or Sundari representing the beauty of married life. We now move on to the fifth form known as Mahadeva. Mahad Eva means the greatest alone. Who is the greatest? Whichever is biggest, whichever absorbs everything within itself is the greatest. And that is nothing but the soul because it even absorbs God after the end of all creation. Thus the message here is always to remain true to one's own identity which is the soul alone. It represents the identity or the hexagonal aspect of the causal form. The location being Kashi also called Deva Pirmanalur or Te Pirmanalur near Kumbakona. Once after our marriage while in Tiruvaru we had a small quarrel. You were under the impression that everything worldly is maya or illusion and is to be plainly rejected. This was a lyakrama oriented perspective limiting yourself in identity. To correct this, I left you and took the form of Annapurna Visalakshi. Because of this, the whole world starved including yourself. To rectify this, you had to come to Tepurma Nalo, correct your thinking and obtain food from me in arms. We then took the form of Vishwanatha and Visalakshi Vedanaiki in Te Pirmanalu. Vishala means wide-eyed, essentially absorbing everything without inhibitions, noting that your identity, the Atma, does absorb everything without discrimination. So the form of Vishwanatha and Visalakshi, which is famously known as Kashi, is none other than in all originality Te Pirmanalu. In addition to Te Pirmanalu, the Vishwanatha Visalakshi is also celebrated as Jagadishwara Jagadishwari in Pereyal near Kurikare of Tiruvaru, the place is also known as Ohai Pereyu. Why did I choose the Anna aspect? Because Annam also meaning swan or hamsa, which in essence is your breath. So, so, the sound so made by inhaling and the sound hum made by exhaling. The Annam as cooked rice has a very unique property. When you pour milk diluted with water on the rice, it absorbs milk and drains away all the water. In similar way, Hamsa Tattva means adhering to your identity which is the real truth, discarding away all the untruths such as Laya limitations. Burning away all the Laya results in productive Shishti alone retained. And this is what is seen in star, Tara as the fire energy burning inside it to create productive activity and life itself. This is why the Hamsa or proper discrimination is also known as Taraka. We also enacted an incident to show what happens when identity is not maintained. Once, there were three demon brothers, sons of Tarakasura, who could never be defeated by anyone simply because they were well rooted in their identity. To destroy them, they must be confused of their identity, for which reason Vishnu was sent in the form of Adi Buddha. Then later on, a grand arrangement was made to kill them where various deities themselves formed chariots, weapons and other components on which you were to mount and attack them. However, none of the deities were in correct identity as they all thought the destruction would be happening because of them. Because of this the chariot broke and you, the Atma, ended up killing them with just a smile. That's the power of correct identity. Anyway, we returned back to Tirvaro and established the form of Kamalampa as Visalakshi enshrining the Bala aspect. The Hamsa Tattva is described as Soham or Oham 
nothing but om emanated continuously from the chintamani stone that the vigraha is made of now we move to the sixth form of the ashtamurtis rudza this name means dispeller of sorrows now we must understand what is sin and what is sorrow in reality everything created in the world is by me alone the divine will the only thing you do as atma is to see and feel when there is a mismatch between these two that's when sorrow and sin arises to rectify these are recommended the practices of yamas and niyamas out of which two are most crucial one is satya meaning to always be aware of the dictum i see you do the other is gratitude to everything i've done for you because that's often the seed of love thus this burning away of darkness and sorrow through correct perception is denoted by the fire aspect happening in tirvannamalai and also exhibiting ss love once there was a demon andaka who among doing many other sins lusted after me parvati this lust is clearly a bad thing arising from the fact that he has forgotten the truth of how i am his own mother nurturing him thus you killed him this episode happening in tirukkovilu after profusely repenting he became bringi one of the foremost of your ganas but that hardly solved the problem now rather than lusting after me he completely avoided me and only worshiped you even sometimes taking the form of an insect to do so thus even though he did pass the test of satya and understood the position of soul and divine will as father and mother he still did not master the gratitude towards divine will to rectify that you took the form of a pillar of fire in tirvannamalai represented by the hill arunachala whereas i took the form of unnamalai uma in penance to merge in you and became one half of you as ardhanadishwara this forced everybody to worship us together and never separately the love form between you and me is the standard ss form this is because contrary to most descriptions i didn't merge into you but rather you merged into me the normally white shiva merged into the red uma so much that the hill itself is now named after the red hill aruna achala aruna achala once done we return to tirvaro and established the shrine of achaleshwara denoting the arunachala hill even today the shrine is famously worshiped with ghee lamps and the miracle of no shadow visible inside the sanctum can be seen a testimony to fire and light now we move into the seventh form called bhima the name bhima means terrifying there's nothing more terrifying than death and that's exactly what is meant here that life or death is decided by one factor which is breath or the air element life and passion all happen because of an impulse a soliton which denotes the eastern amnaya if you go to sleep today and the impulse is missing tomorrow you don't wake up you are dead how to handle this impulse is a question of life and death this is illustrated by the form of air happening in shri kalahasti and exhibiting sn love the most visible and direct form of god even more obvious and universal than the sun is as air or breath in that form we are accessible even to animals and reptiles whose brain have no capacity to reason unlike humans animal brain operates completely based on the soliton impulses alone to illustrate this you took form of a vayulinga in shri kalahasti where you were worshiped by a spider shri the two snakes kala and elephant hasti i took the form of jnana prasunambike illustrating how must one must use the breath and life to seek truth and love this wonderful place is also the site of kannappan where with him you demonstrated the sn or all male love becoming the provider to him the soliton is turiya or para the primordial impulse that kick started all creation a person masters these and by extension all the five amnayas only if he has reached the ultimate heights of love and truth such people are the truly accomplished one the siddhas who can avert not only rebirth but even death in this life switching bodies at will and living for hundreds of years it is to illustrate this that we took form in tirukkadayu here was a devotee markandeya fated 
to die by the age of 16 who instead spent that time of doom in ardently praying to us and immersing in pure love. And even as the god of death Yama came to take him away, you took the form of Mahakaleshwara to protect him and disable Yama himself. I supported this manifestation of yours by taking the form of Abhirami. I also famously turned a new moon into a full moon for my devotee Abhirami Bhatta just by using my nose stud, showing yet again how even time is in the mercy of a true Siddha. This form is a real form of Mahakala and Mahakali and for this reason Tirukkadayur is also known as Tirukkadayur Mayanam, seat of true wisdom or Tirukkadayur Mayanam, the grand cremation ground. This is the place of Ujjain coming from Jaya, victory over death or Ujjivanam meaning mastery or over life itself. We then returned to Tirvaro and established the Siddheshwara Shrine, giving to the world the complete perfection of Hamsa Siddhi and the five Amnayas through the Panchakshari Mantra. We finally go to the eighth form known as Sharva. Mistakenly called by many as Sharva, destroyer of darkness, the last form is actually Sarva or Sarveshwara, literally meaning Lord of everything. This is because this form symbolizes Brahma or the creation generation aspect as Punashishti or recreation of everything after having touched the height of love and bliss in the Bindu. This form was taken in Madurai. Sages such as Markandeya and Aden Siddhas were curious to know what would happen when everything came to an ultimate end, the Mahapralaya. Not just physical destruction of the world but the ultimate destruction of everything, death and time itself. What is that state with complete intensity of blissful love like? And does that punashishti, what does that look like? To answer this, they were asked to come to Madurai and witness our next incarnation. But prior to this, we took a form in Tirukkandiyur to show how for punashishti using satya, the current shishti using asatya and maya must necessarily be dismantled first. To enact this, you took the form of Brahma and were asked to find the extremity of Kameshwara and Kameshwari in the form of a pillar of fire and Brahma lied of having found it. This showed that current creation always dwells on Maya or untruth, creating lies as truth, limiting itself to finite extremities and not opening to the true infinite nature of love. This incident of chopping of Brahma's head as punishment took place in Tirukkandiyur in Tirvayyara. After this, you took the incarnation of Parashurama in Tirvaru, while I, being Kamadenu, took the incarnation of Renuka, none other than Para herself, with the purpose being to show people the nature of marriage with Kameshari that a person attains after touching this height of love. In this incarnation, we showed how the love in the form of Kamadenu must be protected with chastity towards one another. To enact this, I slipped on the issue of chastity as Renuka leading to myself being kidnapped by a demon, Kartavirya Arjuna, named after the Arjuna or Maradam tree, who you then killed and cleansed yourself of Brahmahati Dosha in Thiruvadai Maradam and installed Shiva as Mahalinga Swami, even today known as Madhyarjuna Kshetra. Your chastity towards me was rewarded with full wisdom of everything, extraordinary powers and you eventually became a Chiranjeevi as Parashurama living even today in Tirvaru and occasionally visiting the hills of Mahendragiri. To access this place, you had built a teleporter in Tirvaru. This was later misused by some elements due to fights in the kingdom and the administration of Tirvaru, whereby they had taken one aspect of the Shakti and wealth of this place forcibly through the mud and installed it in Tirunandikkarai near present-day Nagarkoil and nearby associated places such as Iranil and Padmanabhapuram as well as Tiruvattara. From this, three kingdoms namely Chera, Chola and Pandya were born and the Shakti maintained by Pillai community of people until it was forcefully usurped by another community namely Nadas who went on to start the Travancore Empire in Trivandrum, covering up the Shakti with the form of Ananta Padmanabha Swami. By the end of the Dark Kali Age, these forces had joined with survivors on the Mahabharata such as Ashwatthama, coordinating various kinds of astral attacks on Tudvaru temple, which we, you as Rad, along with Kal and May, set straight. That enabled me locally 
to shift to Perusalvam Vilay, from where you rescued being back to Tirvaro, thus starting the age of complete truth or Satya. Anyway, returning back to the timeline, long after Parashurama incarnation, we moved to Madurai, where I took birth as Meenakshi, a young princess of the Pandya dynasty. I was extremely courageous, skilled in administration, ruling the kingdom, while also in constant Viraha penance to attain new, whom I owned since birth in the form of a third breast. Then, with my penance complete, I reached Tirvaro, attained you in the form of Sundareshwara. We returned to Madurai and married in a grand celebration which highlighted the entire causal form. You in the form of Brahma merged into me, in the form of Rudra married me and in the form of Vishnu gave me away in marriage. In this image, the entire concept of the causal trinity can be understood. After that, we gave the Siddhas and Markandeya and all the other great enlightened souls what they had been earnestly waiting for. We took the form of Matangeshwara Matangeshwari, no different than Radha Krishna, to illustrate the concept of Bindu and love and Punashasti. We were both in the midst of a cremation ground. On the one hand was death, corpses, ghosts and spirits. On the other hand was life, greenery, flowers and parrots, showing how love transcends both. Everybody had a place in this ultimate home. The saint, the sinner, the healthy, the deceased, the good, the bad, the beautiful and the ugly. That's why this beautiful place is known as Kadambavanam. Kadamba meaning multitudes. We were both intoxicated in each other, dancing around aimlessly in extreme drunkenness of love, cozy in love in each other's arms. This was the place of Sa Uma or Soma, the moon, the river Somnath among Puranas. We were both dark complexioned, indicating the Bindu, the womb, and yet we were celebrating the festival of Holi, splashing colours and ash on each other, indicating the enjoyment of Punashashti love in all worldly and spiritual things. Thus, we showed the Siddhas what was the ultimate end of it all, the Mahapralaya and Mahasmashana of everything, deceptive, everything illusory, which is also the Mahagarbha of everything, that is truth and love. Following this, having finished the entirety of Shiva incarnations, I merged into you, Shakti merged into Shiva, and you took the original feminine form of the Atma. In this form, you were installed in Tirvaru, establishing yourself as Nilot Palamba, with yourself, your friend, your infant, and your flower, denoting the four components of Jeshta, Sundari, Bala, and Para, respectively. Then, the form of you, Shiva, with the form, power of me, Kamadenu, merged fully into Parashurama and continues as such till this date. Briefly, in the Kali age, you also took the form of Buddha from Parashurama and I took the form of Vasudhara or Mother Earth. This birth happened in the foothills of Tirumala known as Kapilavastu, where today there is a temple of Kapileshwara Swami. Then, leaving the kingdom and roaming through many places, you reached the place of Kekkarai near Tirvaru, known as Gaya, Bodhgaya or Gayakarai where you attained enlightenment. Then you headed to the hills of Podikai, known even today by the name Potala, spending your days teaching in and around this place about identity of soul and other wisdom, though in a hidden way suitable to the dark age. You laid extensive focus on compassion and hence was known as Arya Avalokiteshwara or just simply Arya Shasta. To this account, there is a temple dedicated to this form in a place called Aryankave and a lot of Buddhist artifacts found nearby. To a very select group of people, you put forth tantric secrets under the Vajrayana system, giving hints about your para form as Vajrayogini, Renuka. In passing, we mention here one important form of this. The original form of you as Adi Buddha, while you took, while the Tripuraswada Samhara episode, is known in this Vajrayana system as the form of Manjushri. And is represented by two unique features, one the long sword in your hand and two the tiger. This same form is locally known as Karpaswami. Anyway, having finished the Buddha incarnation which was inspired by Adi Buddha and taken from the Parishama incarnation, you finally attained Parinirvana or passed away in Tirvaru near the shrine of Anandeshwara known today as Kushinagar, merging again into the Parishama form itself. To this date, the Shiva incarnation continues as Parashurama. With this conclusion, 
Lord Marvel at the depth of information just revealed by Govinda about their own incarnations as Kameshwara and Kameshwari. Taking the entire day to summarize this knowledge by sunset in the evening, they visited the local temple of Kashi Vishwanatha Visalakshi, a place they had been to at least 100 times by then, except only now they were visiting after fully understanding the significance of the Kameshwara Kameshwari forms. Here we give the map of the significant places mentioned here with numbering. 1. Suchinsam, 2. Mahendragiri, 3. Tirchandra, 4. Madurai, 5. Uti Bhavani, 6. Tirvane Kaval Trichi, 7. Tirvayar Tirukandiyo, 8. Tirvadigai Pandrutti, 9. Tirukkovilu, 10. Tirvannamalai, 11. Kanchipuram, 12. Shri Kalahasti, 13. Chirambaram. In this map, 1. Kurikkarai Perayal, 2. Sikkal, 3. Tirvaro, 4. Tirvarukkudi, 5. Triambakapuram, 6. Setalapati, Prayag, 7. Kuttalam Tirmanancheri, 8. Terarindu, 9. Valuvur, 10. Kurukkai, 11. Vaitishwaram Koyal, 12. Sembanar Koyal, 13. Tirupparyalur, 14. Tirukkadayur.